If right now a typical day involves you needing to figure out what you're gonna make for dinner, checking to make sure that you have the ingredients, possibly running to the store to grab some last minute things, then cooking your dinner and cleaning up we are here to tell you about something that can save you time, money, and so much mental space. Enter the humble hero of our story, Freezer Meals. Today, we are going to show you how to make freezer meals so you don't ever have to worry about what to make for dinner, what ingredients you have, what sale you're going to catch, and how much money it's going to cost you for mm, a few weeks, maybe a few months. And we're going to walk you through our process from start to finish so that you can see exactly how you can do this too. And stay tuned because we have a big announcement coming up about our Freezer Meals 101 Club that you're not going to want to miss. We're gonna jump right into the first recipe just to give you a little taste of what we're talking about. And then we're going to pop back and we're gonna backtrack a little bit to show you what happened before we even got to these first recipes. For this Hawaiian chicken sheet pan meal, it couldn't be easier to put together. We're going to start out with our chicken in our bags and it has already been cubed up and we leave it raw. We're going to add in a red pepper, coarsely chopped, an orange pepper coarsely chopped and purple onion also coarsely chopped. We are adding in some roughly chopped carrots. These are maybe a little rougher than we want, but my daughter did the prep on this one, so I am not going to complain and I'm going to thank her for these carrots. And we're gonna add in some minced garlic, some thick teriyaki sauce and some pineapple juice. Now, I needed to open up a second jar of teriyaki sauce, so when I finished the first jar, I had a bit of the teriyaki sauce left so I added the pineapple juice to the jar and shook it up so that I could get the rest of the teriyaki sauce out and still use up my pineapple juice. So I might have an extra teaspoon or something in the bags, but that's okay. I'm glad that I was able to finish that bottle properly. So we're gonna seal that up and get it into our freezer. On the day of cooking, we're going to thaw it and we're going to add a can of pineapple chunks that have been drained. It's super simple. We're going to spread the contents out onto the baking sheet using a bit of foil or parchment paper to save on cleanup. We are going to cook at 350 for 20 minutes, then we're going to add that can of pineapple chunks and then bake for another 10 to 20 minutes until our chicken is fully cooked and hopefully our carrots are at least tender crisp. Sprinkle the sesame seeds on and serve. One of the things that saves you time when you're doing this is to gather your ingredients for the recipe before you start assembling it. That way you're not running around while you're trying to put it together. So I'm doing the honey mustard chicken burgers. So I've got my recipe and for this I need my chicken breasts. Now for these we sliced them lengthwise and we did that in our prep. So those are already in the bags and we're gonna need Dijon mustard, honey, Italian seasoning, red pepper flakes, and salt. So I'm just gonna scurry around the kitchen, gather up those ingredients, and then we're gonna put this one together. So you've got your chicken breasts already in your bag, sliced in half lengthwise, because that's gonna make your eight burgers. Then we're going to add in some Dijon mustard, melted honey, Italian seasoning, red pepper flakes, and salt. That's it. Really simple recipe. We're going to squish all the ingredients together to combine it. Then we're going to get as much excess air as we possibly can out of the bag because when you're freezer cooking, air is going to be the thing that causes your freezer burn. So you're going to want to be careful to get as much air as you can out of all of your bags and then you're gonna seal it and freeze it. On the day you go to cook this one, you actually are just gonna thaw it and cook those burgers up right on your barbecue. If you don't have access to a barbecue or it's the wrong season for barbecue, then you can pan fry these in a large skillet, just five to seven minutes per side. You're gonna, of course, serve these on buns or in lettuce leaves with all of your burger toppings. These blackened chicken bites are a brand new recipe, but I already know they're gonna be amazing, so we're gonna go ahead and make four 
four of these, two for each of our families. Into our freezer bags, we've already got our cubed raw chicken. Now I was gonna put these into medium freezer bags, but I forgot when I was adding cubed raw chicken into the other large freezer bags when I was doing my prep. So you'll see that these are in large bags, but you go ahead and do these in medium quart size freezer bags because that would save some space and they definitely don't need these huge bags. In a bowl, we're gonna mix together some salt, pepper, smoked paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, basil, thyme, and a bit of cayenne. You can add more cayenne if you like things spicy. Then once that's mixed together, we're going to add that to the bag and we're gonna do a little bit of shake and bake here. So we're just going to close the bag, shake it to coat that chicken in all that amazing seasoning. And then you're gonna open the bag again, get as much air as you can out, reseal it and get that into the freezer. On the day you go to cook this, you thaw it, you're gonna heat some oil in a skillet, add the chicken to the pan. This is gonna cook up so quickly because they're such small pieces. What I love about this recipe is you can serve this on like a Caesar salad and make it into like a Cajun chicken Caesar. You can serve this on a pasta with Alfredo sauce. You could serve this in a wrap. I think it would be really good in like a Caesar wrap with some lettuce. Anyway, I'm super excited to try this one. I know it's gonna be amazing. Crock-Pot barbecue drumsticks are so tender, yet they are crisp. You will love how easy these are. We start out with our drumsticks in our bag. We're going to mix together some paprika, cumin, and salt in a little bowl, and then we will sprinkle it over the chicken in the bag. Then we are going to add our garlic that's minced. We just use it from a jar and we're going to add one cup of barbecue sauce. You can use your all-time favorite barbecue sauce. It doesn't matter which. We're going to squish these ingredients around and then we're going to remove that excess air and seal. We're going to put another batch of the barbecue sauce into a separate bag, the medium sized freezer bag, and we're going to staple these bags together Make sure you staple above the seal, and then we're going to lay it flat to freeze. When we go to cook these, you're going to thaw them. You're going to cook the drumsticks in the slow cooker. Dump that big bag right into the slow cooker, cook it on low for four to six hours, and then remove them and put them on a foil-lined baking sheet. Brush the extra barbecue sauce onto the chicken, and then we're gonna broil it. So we're gonna let it get crispy and sticky, and we are then gonna flip them over, broil the other side, and these are ready to go. We briefly mentioned the Freezer Meals 101 Club where we kind of take all the hard parts out of this for you. Make it super doable because you can go in there, you can grab whatever you want from our tried and true freezer meal recipes and it will create your shopping list, your prep list and your printable labels. So all you need to do is run to the store, grab what you need, do your prep and assemble your meals. There's also some other helpful things in there, like some exclusive videos and all of that kind of stuff. But there was something missing from the club. There kind of was, and people were alluding to it a little bit, like, I don't feel like I can get started. It's a little bit overwhelming for me. And the people that jumped in and used the club to really start stacking their freezer were loving it and were reporting that it was life-changing for them, which was awesome for us to hear. It was, but we wanted that for everyone. So what we decided to do is make an addition to the club. So everything that you love about it is staying the same, but we are adding an awesome feature, which is monthly live cooking classes with us. So what we're gonna do is we are going to send you ahead of time a meal plan with your shopping list, your prep list, and your printable labels. You can go out, prep your ingredients, and then join us and it'll be like you're in the kitchen with us. We're gonna cook together. There's gonna be a chat going so that you can ask us questions, you can give us comments. And if you're struggling to get started, it's the perfect way. You don't even need to choose the recipes. You don't need to feel overwhelmed because there are over 350 recipes in there. Yes. And we add more every week. So it can be overwhelming when you first get in there and you just see this massive list. And yes, 
We have it set up so that you can easily filter through like, you know, depending on your diet or cooking method or protein. If you can find a sale on chicken, you can click the chicken button and only the chicken recipes will populate. Like we have it set up so that it's easy that way, but it still can be overwhelming for some people just getting started. So we are really excited about this because this is going to be a way that we can hold your hand through this. And for our seasoned members, it's a way for us to connect with you. Our lives in the past, it's like you are here and we love it. So you are going to yeah. love this. It feels like getting together with friends. We just love so much being able to invite you into my kitchen. This feature is going to be included for all of our existing members. If you've been on the fence about joining the club, you need to jump in right now because the price of the club is going up. Once you're a member, it stays the same price that you joined at forever, for as long as you stay a member. So you really want to jump in right now. Join us. We can't wait to see you there. We have never done a recipe, freezer meal wise, that has bone in, skin on chicken thighs. We have been wanting to try one and so today's the day. <laughs> Yay! I decided to do chicken tagine, which I've never tasted before, but I've read about it. And so I tried to create a freezer meal version of this and we're using our bone-in skin-on chicken thighs for this, which Christy also trimmed. I did, um, it was mostly just pulling missed feathers off. There wasn't <laughs> a whole lot to trim besides. <laughs> But my, my hands got so sore doing it, so I went and cleaned up a pair of needle nose pliers and I did it with the pliers and then to get it off the pliers, I rinsed it in a thing of water and I kept going. And so it worked really, really well. I promise I cleaned the pliers first really well before and after because then I'm like, now we have chickeny pliers. There you go, folks, chickeny pliers. <laughs> chickeny pliers. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna try this let us know in the comments how you think this one's gonna turn out because it's a real departure from our norm yes so we've got our chicken thighs in the bag we're gonna mix together some seasonings in a bowl we're gonna add some paprika turmeric we're trying to cook with more turmeric because it's supposed to be really healthy for you and have anti-inflammatory properties some cumin coriander cinnamon cayenne and salt and pepper then we're gonna add that into the bags with the chicken and we're gonna shake it in there just like good old shake and bake take out the air that we can and seal it then in another large bag we are going to put sliced onion carrots that are in large chunks again Christy's daughter did these and they're a little on the large side but that ah, you know more carrots then we're gonna have some minced garlic some ginger now when we use our ginger we get the squeezy tube and just find that it's still nice and fresh but without the work of having to mince that ourselves then we're gonna add some fresh lemon zest and lemon juice, some melted honey, chicken broth, and pitted olives. I chose mixed pitted olives for this just so that everybody you know, seems to like different kinds of olives and whatever in my family. So everybody will get what they like. Then you're going to get the air out of this one and you're gonna staple these ones together above this seal and get those into your freezer. When you go to make this, you're gonna heat some olive oil in a deep skillet on your stove after this is thawed, and you're gonna add your chicken and sear it on both sides. Once you have a good sear on there, then you're gonna add that bag of vegetables and sauce, and you're gonna cover it and simmer it for about a half an hour. You want those carrots to be tender crisp, and of course, you want your chicken to reach that safe internal temperature of 165 degrees. When we are planning one of these mega meal marathons, there is a little bit of behind the scenes things that tends to happen. Christy moved into the house two doors down over 12 years ago and she noticed that I had freezer meal cookbooks on my shelf and asked me if I did that kind of cooking. Yes. And I did and so we decided to try it together and it seemed to work rather well. 
It really did, and kind of the rest is history. And so over the years, we have really developed a lot of great time-saving ideas, things that we do that just work so well. And I think we play to our strengths, which mm -hmm. is important when doing this with a freezer meal partner. Absolutely. So the first thing that we do is we plan the meals. So we'll talk about what are your must haves is one of the things. Yes. And in the beginning, I would come over and we would have a meeting <laughs> and we would pour over recipes and what do you want to do? And we've had this before. And what, what do you think about trying this and yay or nay, or I don't do coconut. So, you know, those things, especially if you're just starting out, that's really important. But yes, now Charla is the mastermind of the recipes. And so she's like, what are your must haves? And then she just builds it out from there. So Christy sent me her must have list for this one. And so I've included those. And then I've included some of our other tried and true recipes. You can find those on freezermeals101.com or freezermeals101club.com. And then I invented some recipes. So you're gonna see some brand new ones today. And that's always fun. And it's fun for me to invent them. It's fun to try them, except when they're bad. <laughs> Usually they are hits. We've had a few misses over the years. Then from the recipe list, we have to build the shopping list, mm -hmm. which is a chore, which is why we created the Freezer Meals 101 Club for you so that you don't have to do all that work. But mine, because I'm inventing recipes and they're new, I have to do it by hand. And so then I'm like doing tally marks to oh, figure out. Oh, it's an interesting sheet. How many like pounds of ground beef. Oh, and like how many onions need to be diced versus minced versus sliced. And how many peppers need to be sliced versus diced versus big chunks. Like it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. But once we get that done, then Christy makes the labels. I do make the labels. The first time we did freezer meals, I got here and Charlotte was so organized. She had stations set up with the recipe and all the ingredients, but then she had sat up late that night, handwriting with a Sharpie on each of the freezer meal bags, the, <laughs> the recipe and the cooking instructions. And I have an admin background. I am very well acquainted with Microsoft Word. And I said, oh honey, <laughs> No, we're not doing that again. <laughs> and so now we make labels and now we just use most of them from the club mm -hmm. and it's really handy. And if you're in the club, you have labels too. And on the labels, you also want to include the date because then it's not like Russian roulette when you're going through your freezer. <laughs> How old is this? When did we last make minestrone soup? <laughs> Then we go and do our shopping. Now, usually the shopping is pretty seamless. Christy does Costco, the bulk store, and if there's any like odd stops, like if there's a liquor store stop or uh, like it. Specialty, specialty ingredients. Specialty, yeah. And so she does that part. And then I do like our local grocery store. And I usually plan it around their 15% off day so that we're able to save even more money. And we also do a bit of like looking in the flyers to see what's on sale when we're doing the planning. Anyway, usually the shopping all goes like, we've got this down pat. We do. There's usually a flurry of texting of, they don't have enough zucchini. Oh, I'll grab zucchini at the next one. Or I'm not buying salmon today because it is outrageously <laughs> priced and we are just dropping the salmon and I'm not doing it. And Charla says, okay, don't buy the salmon. That's okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But this time. Oh, there was trouble. <laughs> yes. So there were some supply issues mm -hmm. at the grocery store. And so for more than a week, they have not had chicken. Now, I don't mean they didn't have like the brand of chicken that I prefer or like the type of chicken that we were looking for. I don't mean that they didn't have boneless, skinless, but they did have ground chicken. Or I mean like no, no chicken. chicken. <laughs> so, but it was, just, it was just the one store. I was at Costco, chicken everywhere. So totally. what kind of shortage is this? Did you ever find out? They are saying it's a supply issue. So their supplier, is not supplying them with chicken. And then their pork offerings were minimal at best. And so I, like in that The pigs first, are on strike. Like, I'm like, okay, obviously we're gonna be hitting a different store. And in the end, I got chicken, paid way more for it than I normally do. And you know, it is what it is. I had to adapt some of the recipes because even at that second store, we weren't able to find some of the things. I did have to go to a third store, but at a different time, it was just chaos. It was chaos. And where I was at Costco, 
I had some chicken math trouble and I ended up buying a little bit more. It's only two, like it's only like two actual meals extra. So it's not like crazy, but Charlotte's like, oh, already I know her gears are turning. <laughs> what can I make with the extra chicken? We're going to invent something great. So stay tuned to the end because that's when we invent things with all of the little bits and bobs that we have left over. And then the other thing that we do ahead is we do our prep, but I want to show you some more recipes before we get to what we do for the prep. These street chicken tacos are actually a recipe that we did in our Costco copycat video. I will put a link for it up there in the description down below because we were trying to recreate some of Costco's like convenience kind of meals and most of them worked out super, super well. Like they total were hits. Good. Total hits. And this is one that Christy actually hasn't tried yet because we only made one. Mm -hmm. So she's excited to try it. And I'm really excited to have it again because it was that good. And it's perfect for right now because you can cook it on the barbecue. So we're gonna use chicken thighs for this and they are already in our bags because Christy trimmed them last night. I did all the prep for the chicken. We, I used to do it standing here at the counter and it was part of my feet and it was very time consuming, especially if I had a lot of trimming to do. And so last night I just finished them nicely at home in the comfort of my own kitchen. And it's- and that way you can have a movie on. Right? I, I listened to my book. <laughs> Into our bag, we've got our chicken thighs that Christy so kindly trimmed. Then we're gonna add some orange juice, cider vinegar, lime juice, minced garlic, again, just using it from the jar, chipotle chili powder, oregano, smoked paprika, cinnamon, salt, and pepper. We're gonna toss all of that to combine it, and then we're going to get out as much air as we can, seal it, and get those in the freezer. When you go to make these, you're gonna thaw them, and then you can just put them on your barbecue. You are gonna take the chicken out of the marinade before you cook them. You're just gonna cook them for like four to five minutes on each side on medium high heat. You want that chicken to reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees and for that you're gonna use a meat thermometer which Christy has taught me and I am finally listening and I'm glad I am. Then you're gonna chop these, just chop them roughly um, bite-sized pieces and then serve them in small flour tortillas with cabbage slaw, salsa, crema, and lime wedges. This chili glazed chicken has been a perennial favorite for a long time and I promise it's not too spicy despite the name. Start out with our boneless skinless chicken thighs in our bag. We're going to add chili powder, cumin, some balsamic vinegar, some melted honey, and chicken broth. We're going to mix it all around in the bag and saving ourselves a bowl. We're going to remove that extra air and seal it up and freeze it. On the day of cooking, now you have options. You can cook this in the oven at 350 for 50 minutes. You can put it in the slow cooker on low for four to six hours. You can cook it in your skillet. I like to do medium high for 20, 25 minutes. Um, of course, every time I'm going to be checking this with a meat thermometer. Um, but do you know what? Where this really shines is on the barbecue. It is my favorite way to cook it over medium heat for 15 to 20 minutes. When you are prepping for something like this marathon, you are gonna be doing things in large quantities and there are things you can do to save time. Like when I browned my ground beef, I put it on cookie sheets that are lined with foil and baked it in the oven. We did our ground sausage in the slow cooker. It took me two slow cookers full to do all the ground sausage that we had. And then for things like the onions, we've split our prep over the years, again, playing to our strengths. She ships the onions out <laughs> <laughs> yes. for processing. To my house, I chop all the onions. So I'm gonna do the minced. I'm gonna use my little chopper tool. I'll put a link in the description below. It comes with a bunch of these little plates that have, they're super sharp. And so I, I have the two that I use here the most often. I have the one for minced and the one for dicing or chopping. To get the most even chop, I have learned to put this corner V-shape straight down. If you press it in a little bit and it just kind of sits there. 
And then here's the loud part. Bang. That's down in there. If I do it this way, I get long pieces here because of the way the onion curves. So if I do it this way, all of these go down. It goes down through the grate at the same angle. And because of the layers, I get a more even mince. Next round is 24 diced onions. I've laid out 24 here. Probably should have cored. See, look at ooh, got a funny looking core. Probably should have cored the other ones too, but I didn't. That's okay. Today I am doing five minced, twenty-four diced, eleven sliced, and then I have I need seven of them sliced. Get a lot of sliced onions this time. Isn't it funny how certain freezer meal sessions there's like almost a theme? Like, oh, yes. Sometimes it's like so much spinach, and this time no spinach, and sometimes so much zucchini, and sometimes this time no zucchini. Sometimes I have like, two full containers of cheese. I have made yes. 20 or 40 cups of shredded cheese before. This time, I there was so little, I was able to do it by hand. I didn't even get out my cheese, pro my, my cheese processor. <laughs> I didn't get out my food processor to do the cheese. So if you have things like the vegetable chopper or the food processor for when you're doing a lot of shredded cheese or those kinds of things, we will put links down below to some videos that you can actually see the prep and have it broken down like how we do a lot of cooked cubed chicken at mm -hmm. once or the cheese in the food processor. When you're doing large quantities of ingredients, it's easier to have these little hacks. Totally. Barbecue shredded chicken is one of our OGs and it's one of my personal favorites. In your bag, you can use boneless, skinless chicken breasts or thighs. This time we're using thighs. Then you're gonna add some minced onion, minced garlic, barbecue sauce, and some cider vinegar. Now you wanna put a little bit of that cider vinegar into your barbecue sauce jar because then you can give that a shake and get out all the remnants of your barbecue sauce. Then you're gonna again so squish all these ingredients in the bag to combine them. It's nice when you can mix everything together in the bag because then there's less dishes, you're not dirtying a bowl. Then you're going to get your air out, seal it, freeze it. When you go to cook this, it just cooks in your slow cooker. So you thaw it, toss that in there. And then when it's done cooking, you shred it and you serve this on buns with some coleslaw and some garlic mayo. This chicken drumstick recipe I had recently made because you know we were running low on freezer meals and I thought, okay, I'm gonna try this chicken drumstick recipe. It just turned out so amazingly good that we are going to make it into a freezer meal. I said to Charlotte right away, we have to do this. We had to freezer mealize it. Now, you can take a lot of your regular recipes and throw them into the freezer you may have varied results depending on what is in it. So when I say we freezer mealize it, it just means that you know we double check to make sure that things are going in order or sometimes we put things in a separate bag because it doesn't make sense to freeze them all together. Sometimes there's certain ingredients that don't freeze well or we have to do things to them to make them freeze better. 
So this one actually was pretty straightforward. I did adapt the recipe a little bit from what I found on the internet too. So I added in extra things because it just worked out that way. It's what I had on hand. Into your bag, add your chicken drumsticks. We're going to mix together some olive oil, melted butter, lemon juice, lemon zest, and minced garlic in a small bowl and we're going to then pour that into the chicken and massage that all over the drumsticks. Then in another bowl we're going to mix together some spices and breadcrumbs. Now I had Italian breadcrumbs on hand and the recipe called for some salt, oregano, basil, pepper and add that to breadcrumbs if you wanted but I also added lemon pepper because it is one of my all-time favorite spices and I had Italian breadcrumbs so it is extra Italian-y so we have left it that way because it turned out really really delicious. We are going to mix those together. We're going to add it to the bag and then shake it to coat the chicken and we're going to remove the excess air, seal up our bag and freeze it. On the day of cooking we are going to thaw it and spread it on your baking sheet with your foil or parchment paper. We're going to bake at 425 for 20 minutes. We're going to turn our chicken over and cook for another 5 to 10 minutes. Again, we want our chicken to reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees so that it is safe to eat. When we planned this freezer meal session, it was one of those times where like we were in need of freezer meals. So we were talking about like, should we do it now or do we wait a few weeks or wait a week? But honestly, like my freezer was down to just the meals that I'm holding for my son who's moving out soon that I've made for him and some breakfast things that we recently made. It was slim pickings in there. It was so eaten down that I had to make like recipes from scratch. <laughs> now, the good news is one of those recipes is in this session today because it turned out to be so good. I'm like, Charla, I don't know what you just stop the presses is what it was. But yeah, we don't, we feel uncomfortable when our freezer starts to get that bare because we rely on them so much. It is such a safety net. It just feels, it's like the one area in our lives that we actually have together. <laughs> Uh, that's exactly how I feel about it. It's like everything else is a mess and I don't know what I'm doing, but when it comes to feeding my family, I've got that down. <laughs> now, and it's extra good because this week, the wheels really did fall off the wagon for both of us. It has been a trial. <laughs> And we need these meals more than ever, but what we wanted to share with you is just that sometimes circumstances are not ideal. Sometimes things just don't seem to be falling into place or coming together and maybe it's tempting to be like, well, I guess I should just abandon my plan and not do the meals and whatever. You know, like we always say, done is better than perfect. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm trying to say is if we can do these meals this week, you can do meals because when looking at this week, um, those of you who have watched our videos for a while, you know that one of our daughters has been sick since um, 20 to August of 2020, actually. And so she does hospital treatments and they're like sometimes every four weeks, sometimes every six weeks, whatever. But this was a hospital treatment week. And so it was like, oh, that's not perfect because we're gonna have to, you know, get the groceries and prep one day and then be at the hospital with her the whole next day, like in between and then do the meals. So that's not like ideal and I'll be exhausted and she'll be- You'll be behind on prep. Like there's, yeah, a, there's like, a lot of reasons. So that wasn't great. And then Christy's uncle died. My uncle passed. And so we had already agreed when we were gonna do freezer meals. And then my auntie said, the funeral is on this Monday, back in my hometown. So I said, <laughs> okay, we're gonna go home for the funeral, which is totally fine. I'll be back. The funeral is on Monday. We're driving home after the funeral. It's like five hours, four and a half, five hours. And then Tuesday, I'll get my groceries and I'll start prep and I'll be ready to go for Thursday, Friday. No problem. But you're not gonna believe this. In the meantime, a very good friend of ours, like a week ago, uh, passed and he was our age, and that one was hard. Um, and so then the funeral is now set for tomorrow. And, and it's out of town as well. It's also out of town, so I can't help Charlotte film tomorrow. But if I'm not gonna be here tomorrow, we are putting in a full day today so that we can get ahead as much as we can because poor Sharla is gonna have to you know, carry the torch tomorrow. She's gonna do a great job, you'll be fine with her, <laughs> but I'm gonna have to be away again. And so. You know, and two funerals in a week, 
forgive me if I'm not in the best headspace right now. So that has been a barrier as well. So we have really had some heavy stuff going on here, but I can tell you something really great. I can take my friends some freezer meals. Absolutely. Like that it has been a bit of a, and like this particular thing is a tragedy. Like it's truly a, a tragedy. And um, it's been one of those times where it does kind of drive home that, you know, the things that matter. And it is nice to be able to, even yesterday, I was getting a head start on some of the meals and getting them over to Christy's house. Well, actually, my son was getting them over to Christy's <laughs> house because I was heading out the door because honestly, it's really been that kind of week. But when that was happening, I knew that some of those meals were going to this other friend. And, and I felt good about that because I could also be a small part in that. So it's just, yep, this freezer meal time has not, like, it's just not what it usually is. And, you know, if you've watched before, you know we've done... 153 freezer meals. We've done 156 freezer meals. Um, this time, even leading up to it, I had pared the list down. I had I had the list down to 120. Christy's got the the two extra chicken meals, so you know and maybe it'll be 122. And then there'll be other inventions. There's always a few things left over. Oh, well, and you're gonna have to do them all by yourself tomorrow. <laughs> that is my least favorite part. I can't say that. We, some of the the best ones, but it used to be I was so tired. We're on day two, and I my feet are sore, my hips are sore, my I'm just dragging. And Charla's like. Well, we have all of this left over. What else can we make? And I'm like, I'm going home. What are you doing? <laughs> and she would just, well, we can make this and this and this. And I'll tell you, some of our best recipes have come from the leftovers. And so I don't complain anymore. I know it's going to come. I'm totally happy about it. <laughs> but I'm not entirely sad that I'm going to miss that part tomorrow. <laughs> it's true. But this time, I actually am hoping, other than those chicken meals... Uh, that I just found out about this morning that I'm not going to have to invent anything because when I calculated the ground beef, normally I'll calculate it and then I'll add a little more because I'll be like, let's prep it and brown it. We and have extra turkey, can, yeah. you know, That's and true. now there's the extra there chicken. There is extra turkey. Okay, so it might end up being 124 meals, but regardless, it's not going to be 156. I'm, do we want to take bets? <laughs> I would predict north of 130. Oh my goodness. I don't know. I'm, I, it, we'll it is nothing for you to whip off 10 extra freezer meals. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But <laughs> <laughs> she's so funny. <laughs> anyway, we're going to end up with, if we end up with 120, let's say, I mean, 122, 120, you know, well, let's say 120. Mm -hmm. Um, then that's 60 meals each, which is two months of meals. Now, normally we do three months at a time. No one is sad about having two months of not having to make dinner, right? Also, now that we're going to be doing the, the, the live, live cooking class where we're going to be making meals with you, that means we're going to be making meals in between as well. And so as a result, this is going to stretch and it will kind of give us like our base for the next three months. It does. And just because we have them, it doesn't mean that we use them every single night. We have leftover nights just like everybody else or on nights like the other night where I'm like, I'm going to pick up some drumsticks and I am just going to make something new. And it just felt good to do that because I don't have to do that every day. I have found my joy in cooking again because of freezing meals. And I love that I don't dread cooking anymore. I look forward to it. And I even look forward to the mega sessions. Now, this one, like I have to say, you know, we're not going to get to visit as much as we usually do. We're both a little bit dragging today. <laughs> uh, this, it's been a week, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I also really see the blessing in this, like being able to have these meals for us and our families and also for other families. There is tremendous blessing in that, and I'm grateful. So we're going into it with that attitude, but just to let you know, this has been a gong show. <laughs> and if you are thinking... Well, this isn't the ideal time. I'm gonna wait until all the stars align. Like, you I'm can't. Wait until you everything. cannot. 
<laughs> there is no such thing. Things will never be perfect. Just get started. And if all you're gonna do is just double your meal tonight, put one in the freezer, eat one tonight, you will be further ahead. Do that for a week and see how much it changes things for you. Trust us, this really can be life changing. So Christy was talking about how she had some extra bone in skin on chicken thighs. Now, sometimes I might spend some time doing a little bit of research, Googling, you know, searching some cookbooks and whatever to find some recipes. I would usually do it like tonight before tomorrow and then I would do the invention recipes tomorrow, which is gonna be in the same video for you. But today, because as we shared, we got a lot going on. Christy's not coming back tomorrow. I'm gonna be on my own. So I'm trying to minimize what I have to do tomorrow. So I'm just inventing something on the fly. It's not gonna be fancy. It's gonna be super simple. What I'm gonna do with these is I'm just gonna throw in some, we had leftover Italian breadcrumbs from, what recipe was that from? The lemon pepper, dynamite oh, lemon yeah. pepper drumsticks. The dynamite lemon pepper drumsticks. And so I'm going to use some of that. I'm going to use lemon juice. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we've been using lemons like crazy. And usually we just use lemon juice from a bottle, but we had to get fresh lemons this time because we had two recipes that called for lemon zest. So we're actually like squeezing lemons for some of these. So I've got lemon juice coming out the wazoo. And <laughs> so I'm gonna add that and some salt and pepper and some Italian seasoning. And it'll just be really simple, like baked Italian chicken with lemon. I think it'll taste good. I think it, it'll get a little bit of a crunch on it, a sear on it. Think it'll be amazing. Probably do it in the skillet. You could do it on the barbecue. And yeah, then we'll have two more meals done. One of the things that saves a lot of time when we're doing freezer meals is to only do one protein at a time. So today we started with our raw chicken because a lot of it we had gone ahead and prepped it right into the bags. But now that we have finished with all the raw chicken, we're gonna do a wipe down of the kitchen so that we, you know, don't have any cross contamination. Nobody wants salmonella. No salmonella. <laughs> <laughs> and then once we get that done, then we're gonna move on to some other proteins. Christy's gonna start on... Turkey burgers. I am making jerk turkey burgers, which is a new recipe. We're excited about it. I think they sound really interesting. They do, and I have more turkey than we need, so the gears are going in there, I'm sure, because we're gonna have to figure out what to do with the rest of the turkey. But kind of thinking that I'll cook it up today mm. and then do something with cooked ground turkey tomorrow. That'll also give me a better idea of like what we have left when you're done and yep. it'll just smooth things along. And then we're gonna do shrimp after that. And I'm actually gonna get started on ground beef once we get all wiped down here. We don't often bring out the kitchen scale. And in this case, we're going to, because the turkey that I bought was in a huge tube. Oh my goodness, that's huge. It's a giant tube, it's three kilograms, which is a little over six pounds, almost seven pounds of turkey. So we're gonna have some left over, but I can't really eyeball this if I'm gonna make turkey burgers. So I did bring my scale. A scale isn't something we use all the time. It is a nice to have, it's not a must have. I am fully expecting this to like squirt. Oh, oh, it is, it is. It's growing. It's like, uh, That's funny. Nice. It's, that is funny. It's That's rising not, to That's the occasion. That's not bad. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> Look. That's gross. The jerk turkey burgers are a new recipe for us. We're going to start out with our ground turkey in the bowl. We're going to add in Jamaican jerk seasoning, quite a bit of it. We'll add in a peeled and grated Granny Smith apple, some finely chopped green onions, 
and some panko breadcrumbs and a little bit of salt and pepper. We're gonna mix that around. You can use a spoon, you can use your hands, whatever you need to do to get it mixed well. Then we are going to form one inch thick patties. Now for this recipe, I used a two thirds cup, uh, like a measuring cup, and it worked really well. I had a small dollop left over and that I could either make a small burger or incorporate it into some of the other burgers and it worked really well. Um, you want to put a small indentation in the middle of each with your thumb so that when you go to cook these, they have a tendency to puff up and by doing that, it kind of stops them from that happening. To freeze these, we like to put them on a baking sheet covered with parchment paper and then freeze them individually. Then they go into the freezer bag and that way they won't stick together. If you don't want to do that, you could put parchment paper in between them, but we find that this works best for us. When you go to cook these, you're gonna just throw them on the barbecue, medium heat, medium high maybe, for four to five minutes per side until the patties are browned and cooked through. Turkey like chicken is safe to eat when it has reached an internal temperature of 165 degrees. And you wanna serve this in a burger bun. This is a good one to serve with, you know, you could make a mayo for it to put on your bun with a bit of jerk seasoning in the mayo and a splash of lime juice. You know, we kind of get fancy with our mayonnaise when it comes to putting meat on a bun. So this is just one of the things that we came up with. So I'm about to get started on the ground beef, but I thought I would come over and just show you a few tricks that we have. One of the things we always do is we keep a scoop, a one cup scoop in our ground beef. So I went and got this from the fridge because first tip is you want your meat to be cooled before it goes in the bag. So this was prepped yesterday and then it cooled overnight in the fridge. And now I've got this handy little scoop here because two and two thirds of a cup equals one pound. So if I've got a recipe that calls for a pound of ground beef, then I know I just need two and two thirds scoops here and goes straight into the bag and I've got that and it's awesome. Then we keep a scoop in our onions. We've got minced onions, diced onions, and sliced onions this time. Sometimes we have onions in chunks. <laughs> we only have purple onions. In purple chunks. onions in chunks, and, and they've already been used. <laughs> yeah, so this is like for our minced onion, which is going in this next recipe that I'm about to make. So this, it's like about one cup is one onion. So then you know if it calls for half an onion, it's half a cup, and you know, one onion is one cup. And so this makes it handy. And um, so in our minced garlic, which believe it or not, we're gonna go through this whole thing and need to open another one today. But in our minced garlic jar, we keep a spoon all day so that we can just scoop this out. And these little things, like just having scoops and spoons and things, saves us a lot of time. Really does. So another little tip, I'm about to start the curried ground beef. So I was just gathering ingredients and then I thought, I'm gonna come over and explain sort of the method to our madness. <laughs> because over the years we've just developed these little things and every time we've incorporated a new one, it shaves off a little bit of time. And then before we knew it, we were way faster. It totally. Was, the first time we did it took at least two days of assembly. Like I kind of feel like it was, cause some days we went into, or some years mm -hmm. we went into the third day. So it might've taken into the third day that time. But regardless, we did 86 meals, which is still like super respectable total. And I'm not dissing 86 meals cause they were really awesome to have. But now for us to be able to do like 150 in two days, this time 120 in two, hopefully two days, hopefully it doesn't take me longer than two days, but yeah, right. with just like two of us today and one of us tomorrow, like we've just gotten so much faster. The other thing that makes you faster is practice. So if you've tried this and you're like, I don't know how Christy and Charlotte can do it so quickly. I do, it's because we've made over 6,000 freezer meals. <laughs> Exactly, like practice makes progress and we Ooh. have had a lot. 10,000 makes you a master. <laughs> 10,000 hours, we probably are at 10,000 we hours. Might, we might be at 10,000 hours, oh yeah. Yeah, 12 years together and then years before that. We did it on, on our, our own. own. So we might actually be experts, who knew? <laughs> We've been saying that for a while but now it's quantified, so it's real. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, um, Christy's gonna clean up from turkey fingers and uh, I'm gonna make curried ground beef with you. So we've got our cooled and browned ground beef in our bag. We're gonna add minced onion, minced garlic, Madras curry paste, cinnamon, turmeric, ginger, again from the squeezy tube, a can of diced tomatoes, some peeled and diced carrots, and some frozen peas along with some salt and pepper. Just gonna squish everything in there to combine it, get out your air again, seal it, and freeze it. When you go to make this one, it's so fast. You just heat it in a skillet and you can just cook this like honestly in less than 10 minutes it's done you're just waiting for those carrots to soften so it's very fast you can serve this with rice or naan alternately you could do it in the slow cooker if you prefer cajun shrimp skewers we are going to put our shrimp in the bag we're going to put in a splash of canola oil and then you mix it around a little bit to coat all the shrimp because then we are going to dump a whole lot of Cajun seasoning in there. Yes, you see that right, it is a quarter cup, it's four tablespoons. Then we're gonna put another splash of lemon juice in and then we're going to seal those up and just mix those around like the Dickens. And then you wanna remove the excess air, seal it up and freeze. On the day you go to cook this, you're going to soak your bamboo skewers if you want to do the skewer business. You're gonna let your shrimp thaw. And I know for myself, I do like to drain my shrimp a little bit, but don't worry, there is so much Cajun seasoning happening in here. If some of the Cajun seasoning escapes while you are draining your shrimp, that is okay. You're going to take your shrimp and skewer, and then you're gonna barbecue over medium heat for five to seven minutes. And then you can also, like I said, if you don't want to skewer them, you can pan fry these super fast, five to seven minutes. You just need your shrimp to curl up and turn pink. And man, is this nice. This is great for salads. This goes nicely with steak. We have a sesame steak that this goes beautifully with. You could just pop these in your mouth and just enjoy them on their own too. This garlic butter shrimp has been around for a long time for us and it's gone through a few iterations to be honest. It started out to be specifically with the pasta and we do make it for pasta, but again, it also goes nicely with steak. It goes nice with seafood dish of any kind. It goes really, really well with. We're gonna start out with a medium sized bag. We're gonna add in some butter and minced garlic, a splash of olive oil, quite a bit of Italian seasoning. We're gonna add in some red pepper flakes and some salt and pepper. Then we are going to seal that bag up and then attach it to another. Now we just use medium bags for these. They get kind of big and bumpy and they don't fit in your freezer really nice. You could totally put it in a large bag if you want, but we're going to put the shrimp in a separate bag and then we're going to staple these bags together. When you go to cook this, like I had mentioned, it is nice to drain your shrimp, which is also why we're not putting the seasonings in with the shrimp. There's no benefit to marinating these. And these are ones you just want to saute. You make the butter sauce, you saute your shrimp in it when it's nice and bubbly, and it'll, again, six or seven minutes, these are done. Beautifully served on pasta with the butter sauce and everything. Or they are nice to have with a steak or with other seafood or chicken, whatever you like. For the southern style ground beef casserole, you're gonna have your ground beef in your bag. Then you're gonna add some diced onion, diced green pepper, some corn. You can use it from a can and drain it or you can use it frozen. Then some tomato sauce, Worcestershire sauce. Now. To save time, I'm not measuring it out exactly. I'm just putting some splashes in there and estimating because that's another thing that as we're doing so many meals at once, it just saves a little bit of time there. Then some chili powder, salt and pepper. We're gonna squish all of that together to combine it and seal it. Now for this one, you could be done right there or what we like to do is put some shredded cheddar cheese in a medium sized bag and staple those bags together. That way on the day that you go to make this, you can just heat this up in your skillet or your crock pot and towards the end of cooking, you can top it with that cheese before you serve it. The 
This firecracker ground beef stir fry is a new recipe for us. We are excited about it because anything that has firecracker in the name, you know that it's gonna be good. We start out with our ground beef. It's been cooked and cooled, it's in the bag. We're going to add in cut green beans. We like to use frozen ones, super simple. We're going to add in some sliced red pepper, sliced onion, minced garlic, minced ginger from the squeezy tube, a bit of honey, quite a bit of Frank's red hot sauce, a little bit of rice vinegar, and salt and pepper and red pepper flakes. We're going to mix that all around in the bag. We're going to remove that excess air, seal it up and freeze it. For the day of cooking, you're going to thaw this. You're going to dump all of the contents right into a large skillet, or you can use a wok. And then you're going to stir fry this over medium high heat for seven to 10 minutes and then serve it over rice or noodles. This looks so delicious. I would be tempted to maybe garnish it with some green onion or maybe some sesame seeds, but I think this one is going to like blow our tops off. I love it. You know, corn chowder is probably one of the OGs for sure. We have been making it forever. It I is. think maybe our first freezer meal session together because I had made it before that. Right, you introduced me to it. Yeah. So corn chowder. Corn chowder would be hard to make, and I know this because we have done this. Look at all these cans. We've gotten away from using a ton of cans in our freezer meals. But we, we're cooking a lot more from scratch meals. We and really, fresh really ingredients are. And yeah. But there is a time and a place. Corn chowder is one of them. When we first started making these, we didn't have trusty Sally here. I don't know what her name is. Oh, Canny? Canny. Her name's Canny. Um, this is Canny. Three. Canny three. We said good luck, Canny three, because I'm telling you, we have like killed Canny one and two. We <laughs> used them so much. We <laughs> ran the motors right out of them. We did. We totally ran the motors out. So we have had this one since February 22nd of 2020. And I'll tell you something else about that date. That was right before the world shut down. Boy, were we glad to have some freezers. Holy Some man. freezer meals in our freezers. Hey, February 22nd, 2020, we were doing freezer meals. So that means that a few days prior, we had shopped. We right. had done like our big, big shopping mm -hmm. We trip. probably bought toilet paper even. And <laughs> who knows? But we had stocked up without like... We it didn't wasn't know. On our radar. We didn't know a month later that like no. our kids would be home from school and the world would be shut down and you couldn't and find toilet that there paper. There wouldn't be like anything on the store shelves. Do you remember that? That's like buying chicken right now. Right. We're at like pandemic level chicken, chicken only shortages. At the one store, but yes, yeah. like seriously. And so it was actually amazing timing because we just happened to have stocked probably 140 meals. So you know, divided by two or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, when everybody was complaining that they couldn't buy food and they were so we were worried like, about mm. groceries and you know like and you can't go to the grocery store and whatever we were like oh we don't have to go to the grocery store it's not really a problem for us and it was just serendipitous that we happened to but while we were making those freezer meals those very very fortunate to have freezer meals the can, the opener, can opener crapped broke. out <laughs> so we sent charlotte's husband to the store and this is what he came home with it's a cuisinart it's done okay. We we miss it's our West our Bend, yeah. but they don't make it anymore. West Bend, if you ever watch this, we would like our can opener back. <laughs> so Please. really to open up all these cans and a lot of times with corn chowder, we love it so much. We used to double it mm -hmm. often. And so Which it would be twice eight. as many. And so our wrists like literally would get sore from having to twist and twist and twist. So when we got the electric can opener, it made things faster. It made, it's just less hassle. And when our kids were little, they would love to come and help us. Like there was a period of time where your daughter was like the queen of can opening. And then when she was bored of that, cause she was probably a teenager, my son really got into it. And so my son, he was like, could you save corn chowder for me so I could open all the cans? And I'm like, yeah, buddy, here is a freezer meal tip for you. The other thing we learned is to do it on the end of day one. We are not totally near the end of day one. Like, it's getting late, and uh, but we like we said before, I'm not here tomorrow, we are gonna push through, we have a lot to do. But corn chowder, like all soups, is very wobbly. <laughs> so it doesn't, it takes a while to settle in the freezer and it takes a while to freeze. So lots of times we would do it at the very end of day one so that it would freeze overnight 
because then the next morning when we started again on day two, it would be frozen and we could put stuff on top of it and not have things topple. So when people ask questions like, how do you, how do you make things not topple in your freezer? That's one of them. Sometimes we would be, be Especially hearing, with eight of them. And you would hear like, chunk, chunk, like if his things were falling. You open freezer, up the door and, and it's like, <laughs> everything just slides on you. And so we discovered, you know, it's best to like be able to lay them sort yeah. of on their own, not have things on top of them, and then let them sit overnight. And so totally. we're not quite there yet, but the freezer actually has a fair bit of space, so we're we're okay. Um, we'll just keep making meals and, and, and we make can sure keep that's putting on top. them on top. Yeah, right. And we wanted to celebrate Canny Three. We needed to introduce you to our secret best friend. Our other secret best friend. <laughs> To make corn chowder, first you are going to get the biggest bowl that you have ever laid eyes on. And if you don't have that, you can use like a canner or a stock pot, something giant because this gets full. We are going to add into it some diced onion, a lot of kernel corn, a lot of cream corn, a lot of evaporated milk, cream of mushroom soup, some chicken broth, and our favorite part, a couple of slices of bacon that we have cooked and crumbled. We're going to mix it all together. Now, when you go to put this into the freezer bags, there's a couple of suggestions, like maybe you should do it with a friend so that they can hold the bag for you, or you could use a juice jug and you could stick your freezer bag down inside the juice jug and then ladle or sometimes you use measuring cups because they're much bigger and fill that bag up and you want to get them relatively even and get that excess air out and into your freezer and then good luck with that on the day of cooking cook this on your stove top or in your slow cooker really you just need to cook it long enough to get your onions soft and then it is like perfect it is great to serve with biscuits with cornbread with you know just crusty rolls it doesn't matter you can just about do anything So a while back, I made my husband some protein bowls. Yeah. yeah. He'd been bugging me to do it for like the longest time. You were even hearing him whine about it. <laughs> he does like his protein bowls. He goes through these eating phases. He's the guy that will do keto. I remember when he did paleo for a while. He's, the, he's that guy. Yeah, so he was going through a phase where like someone at his gym told him that they were doing protein bowls and so it became a thing for him. So finally, <laughs> I don't mean to roll my eyes at that, but anyway, and he was like, this would make a really good video. I'm sure people would be interested. Like, oh my goodness. But I'm a nice wife and, and he's actually a nice husband and does lots for me. So I don't mean to like make it seem like it's just all one-sided or anything. It isn't. And I was away. Yes. So conveniently it worked out for you to make these protein bowls. Totally. So I spent like not very much time. It took me like a couple hours, including prep to make him, I think I made him like 24 or 28 of these protein bowls. He has been loving them. He's down to three because one of our sons has also been <laughs> eating them. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> One of the ones I did was this hot honey chickpeas one. So they're in these microwave safe containers. You can find those in uh, the description below. There's a link to our Amazon store. You can find those there. They're like microwave safe, dishwasher safe, freezer safe, all the things. But in those containers, I have the uh, roasted sweet potatoes on the one side. And then on the other side, I did this hot honey chickpea recipe that I sort of threw together, invented and mixed it in a bowl. And you know, I was like, and so all the rest of them had protein, like, well, they're protein bowls. Obviously they have protein, but they all had meat. And then there were these chickpea ones. And so the first time he get, like, got to a chickpea one, he was like, where's the meat? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, 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 chickpeas is a protein, really. Like, really, you, <laughs> this, this is... was, you'll, you'll be okay. 
This was intentional, <laughs> this protein. Um, but he was very skeptical. And he ate it and he was like, I think this is the best one. <laughs> <laughs> so the chickpea ones have been flying off the freezer shelf. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I decided that we can make it today. And Christy and I were discussing it and we're like, for her family, it might be a side dish. My husband also would probably balk a little bit at the no meat. Although there, we do have a lot of vegetarian recipes or meatless recipes yeah. where, you know, he's completely satisfied after eating something that isn't meat. And so I think, you know, this could be something I could serve as a main. I would have to just try it out test it. Oh, yeah. It's nice actually to have side dishes in the freezer when you've got like some garlic mashed potatoes in there or some like maple dill carrots or whatever it is. Like we've got some really good side dish recipes and you appreciate it so much. Y you do. You totally do. Because the work is already done. So <laughs> this is our hot honey chickpeas and whether you use it as a side or a main or Maybe you want to make this and mix it in a bowl and then portion it out into some containers so that you can have your own like individual protein bowls for lunch or dinner. That's another way you could go. So we're going to add our drained chickpeas, some shredded carrots, minced garlic, melted honey, sriracha sauce, salt, pepper, and a little splash of cayenne. We're gonna just mix that together in a bag, or if you're doing it in a bowl, you wanna mix it in your bowl first before you pour it into your containers. Then get this in your freezer on the day you go to make it. You just thaw it, heat it in a skillet. This will be done in like five to 10 minutes. You can serve this over rice. If you wanna get super fancy, you can sprinkle it with some cilantro and drizzle it with a bit of ranch dressing. For these buffalo chickpeas, we're gonna add in two cans of chickpeas that are drained into each bag, and then we're gonna add in some minced onion, minced garlic, cayenne, cumin, paprika, salt, pepper, tomato sauce, cider vinegar, and some Frank's Red Hot. We're going to mix that all together just in the bag, just squish it around and it'll mix really nicely and then get our air out seal it and freeze it now this one is super simple to make on the day of you just heat it in a skillet until the onion has softened or you could also do this one in the slow cooker if you prefer you're going to want to serve this over quinoa or rice with a side of broccoli or some steamed vegetables and you have your full complete meal this is another one that would be good for individual portions do you remember the Ham's Ham, ham it, it Up, up Spaghetti? Ham It Up Spaghetti. <laughs> I have nightmares about Ham It Up Spaghetti. So a few mega sessions back, it might have been like three mega sessions oh, ago. Oh yeah, at least. Uh, Christy and I attempted a new recipe and it was called Ham It Up Spaghetti. I, I don't know if it was called that at first or if we decided to call it I that. I think that's what we did. Well. <laughs> After, that could just be what you decided to call it. After we laughed so hard that we were crying. It was so awful to make. <laughs> it was awful to make. The flavor actually wasn't all that bad. It was just awkward. It, and it wasn't, the flavor wasn't good enough to be worth the effort that we had to put into it. Like, <laughs> it was... We couldn't get it in the bag. There was mixing around. There was... We were, like, using multiple utensils to try Your to... son had to take the camera so that we could, <laughs> like, get it in there together. It was so bad. It was so bad. And then I'm like, I, we are never making this again. Charlotte's like, you're right, you're right. We'll never make it again. It was so bad. But... Here's the thing, <laughs> we do like to have some extra ham recipes. You know when you have like leftover ham from Easter or Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever, like it's nice to have recipes that you can use that leftover ham with. Or in this case, they had two for one hams on. And I'm like, I can't pass up this sale. Like that's half price. So. I decided that we were gonna try to redeem the ham it up spaghetti. Now this is not a pasta. It's like just a little bit inspired by the ham it up spaghetti. It has a few similar ingredients, 
but very different because we're never going near that one again. <laughs> I can't even, like, I can't even say it without, like, making a, a, a bad face. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I don't have high hopes for the ham and pea anything because as growing up, like, pea soup was one of those ones that wasn't for me, and mm -hmm. mom would always put ham in it. And so the idea of ham, and I mean, it's split peas, it's totally different than garden peas, I get it. But just the idea of ham and pea soup makes me not want to eat ham and pea casserole. So I might be very surprised, I like ham, and I like peas, I might be the happy, and we're making it with, with rice? Yeah, you like rice. I like rice, should be okay, but I also like spaghetti, and I like ham. <laughs> And that, that was wasn't bad. the thing. So we'll see. Well, I have yeah. my reservations. I hope to be pleasantly surprised. I had a lot of frozen peas in my freezer like and another, yeah, like christy has been laughing at me all day about my peas. <laughs> like peas, like multiple bags, like this big. World peas. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I just thought it might be good to invent a recipe that used the half off ham right. along with some peas. <laughs> So it's a very simple recipe. This is not elevated food here. This is like, you know, serve it to your kids on a Tuesday night food, but there's a time and a place for that too. So and it's usually Tuesday night, <laughs> right before guitar or soccer or whatever you're doing. Yeah, and this would be an, a good one because everything in here is pre-cooked pretty much. So this would be a really good one if you live on your own to mix this in a bowl and then divide it out into small containers that you can microwave or into small quart sized bags. Yeah. And then you can freeze those, take them out and just heat it, you know, in a little oven or you could actually freeze it in the oven safe container. Totally. And bake it. So this would be a really good one for splitting into individual sizes. So here is our ham and pea casserole. Into our bag, we're gonna have our rice. Now it's already cooked and cooled. Then we're gonna add some cubed ham, frozen peas, minced onions, minced garlic, a can of cream of mushroom soup, some sour cream, salt, pepper, hot sauce, and some shredded cheddar cheese. We are also going to put some of the shredded cheddar cheese in a quart size bag and staple that onto the other bag once we've gotten the air out of both and sealed them. Because for this, you can top it with the cheese on the day that you go to make it. You're just gonna bake it in your oven for 30 minutes at 350 degrees because everything in here, like I said before, is already cooked. So easy peasy ham and pea casserole. We just came to do a little check-in because it is um, almost seven o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we started at, I walked in the door at 8.30. I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I didn't really go into it. So I'll go into it now. I made a lot of meals yesterday just because of, you know, when we found out it was really only Yes, was it yesterday or the day before day that we before found out that the, the funeral was going to be Friday. tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. And we had already prepped the ingredients. We so had there bought was, the meat. Like, <laughs> there's it, no going it back. It was happening. You, you can't just be like, oh, I guess we'll do it next week. Like, especially like we've had it where we've had peppers that we prepped too far in advance and then they got slimy yeah, and we couldn't we use, couldn't them. use them. And so we couldn't let that happen this time. And we're, you know, we're all about not wasting and all of that. So it was like, well, we just have to like take advantage of every single minute we have. So I did a bunch of the, ironically, the beef recipes and I don't even eat beef. <laughs> oh, that is funny. I know. I know. <laughs> and started like one of my sons was taking well, them to Christie's house. They're fast because they're the roasts, but they're also like, but then I did all the beef strips, all, with all yeah, the vegetables, everything. and all the you know. So and it makes makes room in our 
fridges. Yes. So we were kind of like there, there was a reason that I was doing them in that order. Um, but I did those. I'll probably put them in like towards the end of the video though, because I still haven't had time to film the talking part of like what's actually going in them. So I'll do that tomorrow. So including what I did yesterday and then what we've been working on mm -hmm. all day today, we are at drum roll, please. <laughs> 90! Wow. So, really happy about that. Tomo like, we're still gonna do a few more. I have giggled pig pork chops on the docket, which I'll tell you about in a sec. And I feel like we're gonna be leaving you in a good place. Because you did 16 last night. Yeah. We did, well, I don't know what the math is. 70. 90 minus 16. 74. 74 right? today. And I would like to see it get you to over 100. Like, I really don't want you to have to do another, another 20 30 or 30 or, 40 or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I would like to see us get to 100 today. I mean, because then you have your inventing to do, and you don't have me to tell you, no, that's a terrible idea. Although, you do bounce things off me. Like, she yeah. does take my opinion into consideration when she's I inventing totally things. Do. Of course, you do. We're rushing to get some of the filming done also because the baby's gonna come home. The baby's coming my home. My mom, who you might have seen earlier, like scurrying around the kitchen helping with dishes because my mom is amazing. She is the energizer bunny. <laughs> so amazing. She then went and picked the baby up from daycare, took him to her house. So she also has three of my kids well, eating stuff at your house. Well, two now because- One's at your house. One's at my house. And one, although it's very possible that my daughter also ate supper at your mom's it's house. It's totally possible. Because my mom is amazing. We've mentioned yeah. that before, but she really is. And then one of one of my kids is, is back home. And so we've kind of avoided like having too many kids underfoot and whatever. Yeah. And your kids are safely stored. <laughs> safely stored. <laughs> uh, in fact, my son, when I was going through my freezer this morning to clear out my, you know, making room for today. One of the meals I had left, and I'm so glad that I saved it, it was the chicken parmesan from last time. It's amazing. And it is so good. So today, I saw it, I'm pulling it out. I was just home right now, so I don't know if you know. What we do is, I have a cooler out on Charlotte's front step, and as we're making meals, we go and we put them in my cooler, and then when it gets to the point where it's like, oh, if we put any more in, I'm not gonna be able to lift it. <laughs> We put them in the back of my car. I drive my two doors down. I go and I put them in my freezer. And so I just dump them in and I spread them all out because I like a chaos sort of. Your system is controlled, controlled chaos. chaos. Yeah. Yes. So I go and I put them and then I come back here with my empty cooler and we continue. But they're getting hungry at my house. And the chicken parmesan couldn't be easier. Yeah. Uh, it's not easy to prep, but no. it's so easy to cook. It's already breaded. The, you just throw it on a tray, you the bake it, done. you put the sauce on and the cheese and you put it back in. So easy, so easy. And he can make fettuccine. So my 14 year old is making supper tonight because I'm here. And if you hear sizzling in the background, I don't know if the mics will pick it up. We are caramelizing onions. Charlotte's going to make caramelized onion grilled cheese sandwiches for her and I to have supper. One of the things that <laughs> happens when we're doing freezer meals, and it's kind of hilarious and ironic, but <laughs> it's like when you're in the ocean, you're surrounded by water, but not a drop to drink because you can't drink the salt water. Well, when we're doing all these meals and we're working all day and mm -hmm. making all the meals, there's none to eat because none are actually like fully done. And so we have a lot of sliced onions as we established earlier. So I was like, oh, we'll just take some butter and oil and caramelize some onions yeah. and then we'll make some grilled cheese a little fancier. Uh, Cause you know, <laughs> I'm a little bit of a foodie. <laughs> and if I had some like bacon jam, we'd put, but we are gonna put some kind of jam on there. Like, I think I have some like pepper jelly mm. we can put <gasps> on there. Do you have pepper jelly? I do. Nice. So we're gonna take a little break for our dinner, grilled cheese, but fancied up. Fancy grilled cheese. And then there, the house will probably erupt in some chaos when the baby comes home and goes to bed. Then after he's in bed, then we can get back 
yep. to doing this and we're hoping to knock out another like christy said like 10 or so meals no, that would be yeah. amazing uh and then tomorrow it won't be so overwhelming for me when i'm by myself a little bit earlier i'm like i'll come by tomorrow and pick up my meals because that <laughs> That sometimes happens when you pair up with somebody to make freezer meals and it's not fair. So I, obviously I never do that, but to, this time I am and I... Well, you know, the thing is, is the circumstances are ones that cannot be controlled. No. And the honest truth is I would rather be in my position tomorrow than in your position tomorrow. That's true too. So it's you know something I can do to help things and it's something where again we can't let these things go to waste the things are prepped the meat like, is bought. this is like, happening this is happening no matter what and I would do it for you you yeah, totally I said and this to my husband yesterday I would do it in your kitchen <laughs> yes you would and oh like, yeah I was talking to my husband yesterday and I said if if this happened, if the reverse were true, Christy would absolutely do this for me. Yeah, so of I don't I would. mind. And, you know, it's just. <laughs> Hopefully, I never have to, but here we are. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, we're going to enjoy our sandwiches. We're going to make some pork chops. What else? What do you have coming up? I. So, I'm debating between starting on the sausage which is I think at least three recipes. So it's a little bit of an undertaking because that would be like 12 meals. Mm -hmm. Or um, starting on the cooked cubed chicken, which is only two recipes, which is eight meals. But it's taking up a giant par portion of your fridge. Yeah, but uh, the sausages as well. Oh, it so is too. It's just, we'll see. But the, with the sausage, honestly, I'm a little bit worried because sometimes my sausage math is not the very best. <laughs> and so... You think you have too much or too little? <laughs> if I have too much, I'm a little worried because then that meal means I have to make more meals. And where tomorrow, if I need to invent more at the end, which I already know I do, obviously, with the turkey and stuff. Yeah. But if I end up having sausage, I'll be a little fresher and I'll be like, okay, well, like, let's go. Whereas tonight I'm kind of on my last legs and I don't know that I want to start inventing sausage recipes. Giggle Pig Pork Chops were named by one of our YouTube viewers named Anna. We had these nameless pork chops and they turned out to be really good. So we asked our viewers to name it and by far that stood out the best. What's funny is since then I've been watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine and like season two they had this big Giggle Pig drug bust. It was the name of the specialty drug and I'm like, oh, maybe she didn't totally just make up the name. Maybe we've borrowed it unintentionally. And now our pork chops are named after drugs in a fictional TV show. So that's pretty fun. <laughs> in our bag, we're going to add in our pork chops. You can use bone in with then, and have them nice and thick, about one inch thick. Garlic, some soy sauce, vegetable oil, lemon pepper, and some Montreal steak spice. Mix that around together, then squish it around gently. Be careful with the bones. Sometimes the bones will poke the bag, especially with the pork chops. Um, sometimes we double bag it because we end up getting little leaks. And then we are going to remove that excess air, seal it up, and freeze it. On the day of cooking, you want to thaw these. You want to bake them on a broiler pan in your oven at 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes or until the center has reached an internal temperature of 145 degrees because we do love our meat thermometers. Alternatively, you can barbecue these over medium heat for 20 to 25 minutes and again, you want that 145 degree internal temperature before you eat these. Enjoy! Sheep pan sweet and sour meatballs have been a massive favorite for both our families since the first time we made it. In the bag we're going to add our meatballs. We use the frozen pre-cooked meatballs from Costco because they are fast and they are done for us. But if you wanted to make your own meatballs you totally could do that. We're then going to add in some green beans that have been chopped some pineapple slices from a can that have been drained, and then some sliced onion. In a separate bowl, you can add some brown sugar, some flour, vinegar, water, soy sauce, and ketchup. You'll see with the three that I have here, I did the first one just by itself, and then I thought, no, I can make all the sauce and just divide it. And so then I doubled the second bowl and divided it between the two remaining bags. Squish all of that around to combine it, remove your excess air and seal it and freeze it. 
On the day of cooking, you will want to thaw it and place all your ingredients on a single layer on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and then bake at 400 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes. This is great served with rice. For the sausage and peppers, we had in our prep made a little meatballs out of the sausage. So we just took it out of the casing, shaped it into really rough meatballs, put those on a baking sheet, got those in the oven. Once they were cooled, we transferred them into the large freezer bags. And now we're gonna add some sliced yellow pepper, sliced red pepper, sliced onion, a bit of minced garlic from a jar, some Cajun seasoning, and half of a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes into each bag. We're gonna squish all that together to combine it, get the air out, seal it. When you go to make these, you just cook these up in a skillet once they're thawed, and they cook up really fast because your sausage is already cooked. You're just cooking that the peppers and onion until they're tender crisp, and then you can serve this one over rice or you could put it in wraps. This is Christy's for my last recipe in this session, which is a little bit sad that I won't be here to help Charlotte tomorrow, but this is one pot Cajun chicken pasta and it is also a huge family favorite between both our families. You're going to have your boneless, skinless chicken breasts that have been cooked and cubed. We're going to add in some Cajun seasoning, red pepper, yellow pepper if you have it, and at this point we had run out. <laughs> We're going to add in sliced purple onion, minced garlic, diced tomatoes with spicy red pepper, heavy cream, cream cheese, and some parsley and a bit of salt and pepper to taste. Then, very carefully, if you would like, you can add in your four cups of chicken broth. Now we use a Tetra Pak here, so that is four cups. You know, be very careful with this. I had done one earlier and I spilled it. And so, you know, get a friend to help. Use your little stand thingies that help stand your bag up or hang on to it better. <laughs> um, so I was a lot more careful with this round with these last three and I could add the chicken broth right in. A lot of times we don't add the chicken broth because we want skinnier bags because we then run out of room in our freezer if they're too fat. But in this case, we have a little bit of extra room. So we just added the chicken broth right in and we're glad that these are fully done and ready to go. On the day of cooking, you're just going to thaw it and then you're going to bring it to a boil and you're going to add in a pound of penne pasta. And you're gonna cook the pasta right in this sauce and it brings on the flavors of everything in the dish. You're gonna stir it fairly frequently for 15 to 20 minutes until your pasta is tender. And then if you have it, you can sprinkle it with Parmesan cheese and red pepper flakes when serving. The end of day one. It is nine o'clock at night. <laughs> it's been a long time since we've gone this late. A long time. And let's try not to do that again anytime Ever soon. Ever again. <laughs> Ever again. It was a really good day, a really productive day. 104? Uh, we are at 104, including what was done yesterday, but yeah. it, like 104. And I'm feeling good about going into tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be in the same video, so just keep watching and you'll see more meals and, and see the final reveal. But yeah, 104 is looking really good. Uh, the kitchen is looking a little worse for wear, but uh, recycling that needs to happen and stuff tonight. But actually, thanks to my mom's help, it's not as bad as it could be, and uh, we're it's going well. It's, it's going well, you know, for having, uh, I, wanna, I don't wanna say a slow start, because we got cracking and we got right at it, but, you know, mood-wise, it was a little bit tough. I think during the afternoon, we had we found our groove. We did really, really well we today. We totally did. It was yeah. like the morning was like heavy, and I don't know if you guys picked up on that, but we just, it, like there was a lot of emotion, and it was just heavy. And, you know, we powered through, we pushed through, and I think, you know, that muscle memory kicks in. Uh, yeah, you just do the things. you're like, oh yeah, I remember how to do this, and uh, yeah, my body knows how to do this, and, and we know how to do this well together. Like, yeah, we work we really, really well do. together. Mm -hmm. And so it just started to kind of click into place, and then there were a few funny moments. Um, and, you know, the mistakes, which have happened They today, happen they actually can provide a bit of like comic relief <laughs> they really do because sometimes you gotta laugh or you'll cry 
Um, I think the best thing that happened today, there was a couple of things. One, Charlotte was super, super organized. Charlotte sometimes can be a very fly by the seat of your pants person. And sometimes I am and it's in different areas. And she was super, super organized this time. You're always organized, but this was like, Organized. I was hyper organized. I had a list of like what order we're gonna do yeah. each meal in and who's gonna do what meal and even like filming things and like right. what's gonna happen. And having every single ingredient, like the pantry stuff out. Yes. We hardly had to open up your pantry cupboards yeah. to look for anything today. And it made a huge difference in time. Like we just beetled through. We even had our spices or the majority of our spices sitting out and mm -hmm. again it just like you're not having to root around trying to find things and so I think that's something that we learned this time uh -huh. that will carry See, through. We've been doing freezer meals for pretty much forever and we are still learning ways to make it better. Uh, yeah there's been a few things and and you know how earlier I was saying like sometimes there's these weird like themes that kind of come out like this time we have so many sliced onions. Well, the other thing was like the fresh lemons. Like when did yeah. we ever, we had like this bulk bag of fresh lemons and we used every single, yeah. they were all zested and <laughs> squeezed and know. you know, so it was. Uh, and, and I don't know the, I don't know ever having, I'm sure we've zested lemons for meals before, but, but rarely, rarely. So, and here <laughs> like it, we just went to town on it. So, yeah, it was My good. My fingers smell like lemon. <laughs> Mine were this morning, so that was a long time ago. They don't, they don't smell bad, but <laughs> like parsley maybe, that's all right. <laughs> Could be worse. And I have to give you an update. Those caramelized onion grilled cheeses. Oh so I decided goodness. as I was making them, I was like, you know, I'm a little worried if we put the jelly in here, like the pepper jelly, it's gonna make it soggy and like. Oh, so we, you're thinking, gonna have to make another one so we can get footage of it. We ate them too fast. We did. So they were on marble rye that was sliced thick that I like got specifically for this purpose, but. We used uh, jalapeno cheese on the bottom, then the caramelized onions, then shredded cheddar cheese that we had for the meals. And then I thought, hmm, so before that, <laughs> Before I replaced the bread, I put on some of that cooked crumbled bacon that we had yes, prepped she for put meals. Bacon on our grilled cheese sandwiches. And I tell you, caramelized onion and bacon grilled cheese with two kinds of cheese, it was a hit. It was a hit. Now, yeah. I have never had a grilled cheese sandwich that took an hour to cook before because we caramelized the onions. It was so funny. But oh, it was so good. It was so good. And to be fair, we were doing other things as that was happening. Yeah, so it wasn't, wasn't like, like we were I was just standing at the waiting. stove for an hour. But no. anyway, it was really fun, and like that part was a little bit of a highlight because yeah, I and, love food. And, and here I was thinking I was missing out by not having my chicken parmesan, but I am pretty sure <laughs> I got the bet, maybe the better end of the deal because that was a good it sandwich. Was a good sandwich. <laughs> so and. Last thing we're going to leave you on before we click off to tomorrow and I'll see you, you know, in the morning, mm -hmm. but it is your, I don't know, whatever, you, whenever you're watching this night, afternoon, day, morning, whatever you want. Um, anyway, did you know that you can freeze grilled cheese? Now, you, Pardon don't, me. you don't cook it first. Oh yes, so I did. So I, I used to do these when my kids were young. So you remember this back from when my yeah. kids were little, but you have to like put the butter on the bread and you put the cheese in there and you just freeze it, but you don't stack them in your thing. It's like when we did the turkey burgers. You have to do like, them individually. You freeze them flat in a single layer on the baking sheet. Then you transfer them when they're frozen to the bag and then you take out as many as you need and you just cook them up and you kind of have it's brilliant. what you need for grilled cheese. So, cause you know, when you have hungry kids and everybody wants theirs done at once, and like, and especially if you are like me and you have seven kids and they're all hungry at once, it's you like, can't be. There's Charlotte the Robin and all the little baby birds like. <laughs> yes. So you can't be buttering everybody's bread and flipping right. cheese and slicing. Like it's just, it, it's, it's mayhem. <laughs> so you can also freeze peanut butter sandwiches. Yes, you can. And so what a lot, what you can do is you have your loaf of bread in the bag, you spread them all out, you peanut butter and jam them, and then you fold them back up and then you put them back in the bread bag. Mm -hmm. And there's your school lunches for the week or 
two weeks or whatever, depends on how many kids you have. The things you learn. The things you learn. <laughs> and you could do it with ham too. You just can't put like the tomato and the lettuce on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, please don't freeze lettuce. Mm. But you can freeze cabbage and you're going to see me do it You're going to see us do it well, today. Well, you can see her do it tomorrow. I will be off doing my own thing. I'll be thinking of you. You guys can think of me and um, we'll catch you next time. I will be back to give you the grand total and to show you the process of tomorrow and we can cry together about missing Christy. <laughs> and, uh, but it'll, it'll still be fun. It is day two. Feels a little bit strange to be doing a mega session without Christy, but I super appreciate that she stayed so late yesterday and helped put me in the best possible position to get things done today. And also my mom is here again today helping with dishes and opening cans and just anything that she can. And so I think actually we're gonna get done, like I'm hoping by two o'clock and we're actually starting late because I'm not very good with tech and I needed to wait for my husband to get back from his workout so that he could set up the cameras for me. <laughs> So just full disclosure, I'm starting at 10 in the morning, not as early as we usually get started, but today's gonna be a great day because things are prepped and I have a plan for some of those leftover prepped ingredients. We're gonna start right now with all of our ground sausage recipes. I'm kind of, I okay, I transferred some of them into bags for the tater tot casserole. I'll show you that in a minute, but I'm a little bit concerned because there's only one other recipe after that, which is four meals. And I'm thinking this is like a lot of ground sausage for just four meals. So I think I might have to invent yet another <laughs> recipe when we're done with this, but we'll just have to see how it goes. In a little bit, I'm gonna come back and tell you what my plan is for that leftover ground turkey. And I also have a plan to salvage a recipe that we thought was a write-off yesterday. So let's get started. For our tater tot casserole, this one is not the healthiest on the planet, but it is some of my kids' favorites. So it does make it into our mega sessions fairly often. Into your medium bags, we've got our browned and cooled Italian sausage. Then then in a bowl, we're gonna mix together some mushroom soup, evaporated milk, salt, pepper, and paprika. Once that's whisked together well, we're gonna put some frozen tater tots in our large resealable freezer bag and pour that sauce over top. Then you're gonna seal the bag and throw it together to coat those tater tots. Then you're gonna open the bag again, get out as much air as you can and reseal it. Then you're gonna staple that bag of Italian sausage to your tater tot bag and get this one in the freezer. On the day you go to make this, you're gonna actually take that sausage and put that at the bottom of a casserole dish. Then you're going to put all of that tater tot goodness on top of that cooked sausage and you're gonna cook this in the oven for an hour you do want to cook it uncovered because that way your tater tots will crisp up and get the texture that you're looking for our egg roll in a bowl is always a super popular recipe. For this, you can use ground pork or ground Italian sausage. We're using Italian sausage in ours and it's been browned and cooled, so we've got that in our bags. Then we're gonna add in some diced onion, minced garlic, shredded carrots, or you can buy matchstick carrots that are already cut for you, which we usually do. Then some onion powder. We're using a three onion blend here. Then some minced garlic from that squeezy tube, red pepper flakes, low sodium soy sauce. It's very important that it's low sodium, otherwise this one gets to be too salty. Sesame oil, olive oil, and then you're going to seal your bag up and just mix those ingredients together, then open it back up and you're gonna add in a whole bag of coleslaw. I was saying yesterday that even though you can't freeze lettuce, you can freeze cabbage. And so this is a great example of that. 
So you're going to get that coleslaw in there and then try to <laughs> seal it and mix it again. It is kind of tough to get all of this combined because it's such a full bag. The thing about this one though is that when you're cooking it up, that coleslaw just wilts right down and so this actually doesn't end up being nearly as big as it looks like it's going to be. This is also a really good one if you want to make it in individual portions. If you did that, you would just want to mix all the ingredients together in a large bowl and transfer it into quart size freezer bags. On the day you go to make it, it's so fast to cook up. It just goes in your skillet for five to 10 minutes. You stir it occasionally if you want. You can top it with some sliced green onions. You could also serve this on rice if you want to just stretch it a little further. This barbecue beef on a bun is a brand new one to us. Into your bag, you're gonna put a beef roast, some minced onion, minced garlic, beef broth, ketchup, brown sugar, paprika, salt, pepper, liquid smoke, dry mustard, cider vinegar, Worcestershire, and molasses. We're gonna squish that all to combine it, get out as much air as we can, seal it, and freeze it. On the day you go to make this, you're gonna thaw it, throw that into your slow cooker or instant pot. Once it's done cooking, you're gonna shred it and you can serve it on buns. We suggest that you serve this with a horseradish mayo because we think that would be extra good. For the Mississippi pot roast, we're gonna add our beef roast into the bag and then add some pepperoncini peppers. We've taken out the stems and then we're also gonna add the juice from those peppers. Some butter, you don't even need to melt it because it'll melt up on the day you cook it. Then a packet of au jus gravy. Some dry ranch seasoning, you can use a packet or if you buy it in bulk like we do, you can use three tablespoons some salt and pepper and then you just get the air out of that bag and seal it and get it in your freezer. On the day you go to make this, you thaw it and you're gonna cook this one in your slow cooker or your instant pot. Once it's cooked, you shred it and you can serve it on mashed potatoes or on buns or even on rice. So I have to show you my mug. This is from my husband. It's a gift from just a couple of days ago and it says cup half full attitude and i wasn't sure if he was trying to like give me a hint that i needed to get back my cup half full attitude but christy always says that i am the person that she knows that has like the most silver lining attitude that she's ever met and usually I do have a cup half full attitude, but I have to admit that the last couple of months I've been a little bit like, seriously? <laughs> like one more thing and then one more thing. Anyway, so I feel like my attitude could maybe use a little bit of an adjustment and maybe I need to go back to more of my default personality, which is more like, let's find the silver lining. I really love our one pot pasta puttanesca. It's different as far as pasta sauces go and it's super fast to put together. Into our freezer bag, we're gonna add some olive oil, anchovy paste, minced garlic, San Marzano tomatoes. You're gonna wanna break those up either with your fingers or with a mix and chop. Then some pitted Kalamata olives, capers, 
red pepper flakes, salt and pepper. Now you can add some chicken broth or vegetable broth right in here or you can make a note on your bag to add it on the day of cooking if you're wanting a thinner bag for in the freezer so that it doesn't take up as much space. Once you get that sealed and put away, then the day you decide to make this, you thaw it and you're going to heat this up in a skillet or a stovetop pot. Once it's boiling, you're gonna add some spaghetti noodles right into the sauce, which is what makes this so super easy. Then you're gonna simmer it for like 10 to 15 minutes. You wanna stir it so that those noodles don't stick to the bottom, but the noodles are gonna absorb some of that amazing flavor. When you're done, you can top this with some shredded Parmesan cheese, and of course, if you're me, some more red pepper flakes, and this one, probably going to blow your socks off if you're a fan of Mediterranean type flavors. For the Mongolian beef, you're gonna add some beef stir fry strips to your bag, some minced ginger from a squeezy tube, some minced garlic, soy sauce, water, brown sugar, those matchstick carrots, and some green onion into your bag. Then you're gonna just squish all that together, get out your air, and seal it. Now, when you go to make this, you thaw it. It thaws really quickly because it's a thin bag. Then you're gonna heat it up in a skillet. You wanna whisk in a tablespoon of cornstarch into the sauce as it cooks, or you can make a cornstarch slurry and mix that in. When your beef is cooked, which is like three to five minutes, super fast, then this'll be done. You wanna serve this over rice and you can sprinkle it with some sliced green onions if you wanna get fancy. Got a really great Philly chicken cheesesteak recipe. And so we've been talking about doing a traditional Philly cheesesteak recipe for a long time. We decided to give it a try and we hope that it'll be as big a hit as our chicken one. We cut some sirloin steak into strips and added them into bags. Then we're gonna add some sliced mushrooms, sliced green pepper and red pepper, and sliced purple onion. We're gonna add in some seasoning salt, mix that all together in the bag, get out your air and seal it. Then in a quart size bag, we're gonna add some shredded mozzarella cheese. We're gonna get the air out of that, seal it, and we're gonna staple those bags together above the seal. For cooking this, once it's thawed, you're gonna cook it in your slow cooker for four to six hours. Then you're gonna place that filling onto some hoagie rolls and top them with that shredded cheese from the medium bag. If you want, you can microwave it or place it in the oven just for a little bit on broil for the cheese to melt. This slow cooker pepper steak is a new recipe for us. We're gonna add into our freezer bag some beef strips, diced onion, minced garlic, diced green pepper, and diced red pepper, some diced tomatoes from a can, Italian seasoning, Worcestershire sauce, steak sauce, and steak seasoning. We're gonna squish that all together. Once it's well combined, we're gonna get out our air, seal it, and freeze it. When you go to make this, once it's thawed, you can cook it in your slow cooker on low for four to six hours. You wanna add in a cornstarch slurry at the end of cooking. You're not familiar with a cornstarch slurry. That's just when you mix a little bit of cornstarch into some cold water. Once it's mixed really well, you add it into the sauce of this and that'll help thicken the sauce up. I am really excited, a little nervous though, to try this next recipe. I, I've been wanting to do something with Shanghai or udon noodles for a long time because one of my daughters and one of my sons just love them so much and I like them too. But it's like, do they freeze? Yes, in theory. Um, is it gonna work to have the sauce in with the noodles and to have it cook all together? I think so. This is probably the biggest experiment of the bunch today, but I've been working on this recipe behind the scenes for a while now, and it's exciting to see that it's actually coming together. We're only making two bags, one for our house and one for Christie's house, because it's such an experiment, but I can tell you that if it works, 
this is going to be one that we're going to try like a million iterations of and I'm going to start inventing recipes like crazy. It'll kind of be like when I discovered that gnocchi freezes really well and started making like all the gnocchi recipes. So I'm using these packets. They're like fresh udon noodles and I don't know. We're just gonna try. So these are only 200 grams each, so I'm actually using four packets for each of the bags. And like I said, no idea if this is gonna work, but let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think this is gonna freeze? Do you think it's gonna cook up in the sauce well? Do you think we're gonna love it? Or do you think it's gonna be a massive fail? <laughs> For these spicy goju tang udon noodles, we're gonna put some sliced mushrooms and red pepper in our large resealable freezer bag. Then in a bowl, we're gonna mix some minced garlic, low sodium soy sauce, rice vinegar, a splash of maple syrup, and some sesame oil. We're gonna put all of that into a quart size freezer bag, and then we're gonna put the sauce bag and the udon noodles right into the bag with the mushrooms and red pepper. I know it's really weird and very different from how we do our freezer meals normally, but again, this is a big experiment. We're gonna seal this and freeze it on the day we go to make this. Again, this is in theory. We're gonna thaw this and we're gonna saute our mushrooms and red pepper in some oil for a few minutes. Then you're gonna stir in that bag of sauce and stir in the noodles. We're gonna cover it for a few minutes and then stir it. Cover it and cook it for a few more minutes. Wait till your noodles are al dente. Top this with fresh sliced green onions and here's hoping that it tastes as good as I think it's going to. So I have a little bit of a story for the pork carnitas. I was really excited to make pork carnitas because it's been a long time since we've had them and we super enjoyed them last time we made them, which was like years ago. We do have a pork carnitas recipe that we've made before. It's actually in our instant pot freezer meal plan. And I came across it when we were updating our meal plans. And I was like, oh, it's been so long since we made this and now I'm craving it. But when I looked back at the recipe, it, it looked really good and I remember it being pretty fantastic. But my culinary skills have come a long way since then. And so I, I thought maybe I could even improve it and make a better pork carnitas recipe. So we're gonna do a little experiment today and we're gonna make two versions of pork carnitas. One being the one that is in our Instant Pot meal plan. And for those of you who are in our Freezer Meals 101 Club, you can go to the club library and just print off that Instant Pot meal plan, but I also want to do an entirely new pork carnitas version that is hopefully better just based on lots of practice and lots of work on my palate and experimenting and I think I've gotten better. So I want to do this second version and compare the two and see which one we like better and maybe we'll end up with two pork carnitas versions. Ah, uh, I was making the pork carnitas. So I was filming <laughs> and I, <laughs> I was, I'm not sure if it was the first version or the second version, but I was doing like the overhead video of this and I was only doing it with one bag because it's a little bit easier for you guys to see with one bag. So sometimes we'll do that just to, you know, make it easier. And thankfully I had the other pork roast in another bag so that I could, you know, film a whole new video for you with that one because <laughs> One of my sons came walking through the kitchen and he's really tall and he was a little stompy. I'm not like I'm not blaming him because he was just walking through the kitchen, but it shook the floor just enough that the bag went and it was full of all the seasonings. I'll show it to you. Uh, I've, 
you know, these things happen and I want you to know if they've happened to you, they've happened to us too. So don't worry about it. These things happen. But yeah, things like toppled out of the bag, all the seasoning, some of the other things that were in there. And I honestly, a little bit could have cried because this is when I was doing the meals the night before we started the mega session to try to get a head start knowing that Christy was only gonna be with me for one day and that I was gonna to have to you know, do the rest of the meals on my own both before and after and I was just trying to get some things, you know, get things done but the kitchen was full of people. Like the baby was here and my mom was here and uh, pretty like I don't know five of our kids were here or four of them like it was just a pretty chaotic in here and I probably should have known better <laughs> because it was also supper time so people were like going into the fridge and going behind me and going to the sink and so there was like a lot of bedlam in here and yeah, again, I should have known better, but I was just really focused on like, I need to get as much done as possible so that I feel less overwhelmed. And then, yeah, the bag toppled, things went on the counter, like, oh. So I kind of started that one again, but I had a second one that I could film for you. So you'll see like the beautiful overhead now of these pork carnitas, but I'm also being honest and telling you that these things happen to us. And yes, I know that you can get those bag holders. We've tried them before, I own them. Uh, they don't work well for us because when you're making meals on this much of a scale, it actually does slow you down. And we've found actually that sometimes our bags have fallen out of the bag holders. And so it's given us like sort of a false sense of security. So normally if we're doing something that we think might tip, we will either, you know, when Christy's here, one of us will hold the bag and the other one will add things, or um, we will put them in a juice jug or in a Rubbermaid Tupperware container. Uh, this time I was in such a rush, I wasn't thinking, I, and I knew it was a giant pork roast. I knew that bag was not that safe, but I was taking a risk and I was maybe a little bit like too confident because I've been doing this for so long and I haven't had a lot of accidents over the years, but I've had enough that I should know better. So anyway, this is the beautiful pork carnitas video that um, didn't have the disaster. Into our freezer bag, we've got our pork shoulder, some diced onion, seeded and finely chopped jalapeno, minced garlic, pepper, salt, cumin, oregano, coriander, cinnamon, a can of beer, orange juice, chipotle hot sauce, and if you want it extra spicy, you can add some cayenne pepper. You're going to squish all those ingredients carefully in the bag. You're gonna get that air out. Now with the beer, you might have to wait a little bit for the bubbles to dissipate to be able to get more air out. And then you're gonna freeze this on the day you go to cook it. This can be cooked in the slow cooker or the instant pot, and then you're going to shred it. Now here's the magic. And this is the part where I know my cooking a little bit better than I used to, and so I've added this into both of the recipes, including the original one. This one is not the original one. But you're gonna put that shredded meat on a foil lined tray and then spoon some of the juices over top and you're gonna broil that for five to 10 minutes until the edges of the meat start to brown. Then you're gonna get like that really nice almost caramelization on the meat. Plus it's gonna be a better texture. And so when you put it in your carnitas, it's just going to be a better experience for you. Now this is our OG pork carnitas recipe. You've got your pork shoulder or butt in your bag. You're gonna add in some diced onion, some jalapeno that's finely chopped with the seeds removed so that it's less spicy, some tomato paste, soy sauce, cumin, salt, chili powder, smoked paprika, pepper, brown sugar, olive oil, lime juice, orange juice, and two bay leaves. You are going to, again, just squish everything all together to combine it, get out as much air as you can, seal it, and freeze it. On the day you go to cook this, again, you can cook it in your instant pot or in your slow cooker. 
And we're gonna add this new upgraded instruction, which is, again, to put your meat on a foil line tray, spoon some of the juices over top, and broil it until that meat starts to brown. You're gonna serve this in flour tortillas with guacamole, salsa, tomatoes, cilantro, avocados, or cabbage slaw, you know, those taco type of toppings. And you can add some hot sauce if you want. This is going to be amazing. It's probably gonna be one of the first of the freezer meals that I try because it's been so long since I've had it. Plus, I'm really excited to see which one will be the winner. We've reached the invention portion of the freezer meal marathon, which means we're getting close to the end, which is pretty awesome. And it's one o'clock, so I'm hoping, I'm really hoping to end at two o'clock which is actually pretty awesome because we put in a long day yesterday so today could be shorter and it's good, it's going well. We had that turkey leftover from the turkey burgers so we browned that up and I've got it into two bags. There's a little more than a pound in each bag. We have leftover rice. We had that big Costco thing of lemons that we bought. So I've got lemons. We've got lots of minced onion left, a little bit of diced onion left too. Uh, of course, we always have garlic. So I'm gonna throw together like the tiniest little bit of sun-dried tomatoes left. I was hoping that I had Catalamada olives left, but I don't. So what we're gonna do in here is we've got this, we've got all that rice. So we're gonna put rice, minced onion, uh, the lemon, some Italian seasoning, the sun-dried tomatoes, some minced garlic, and then I rooted through my fridge and I found some spinach. It's kind of on its last legs, but it's still usable. So I'm gonna add some spinach in here. I'm kind of gonna make these like Greek turkey rice bowls. Now, I do think they would be better with Kalamata olives in them, so I'm gonna write a note on the bag just to add some Kalamata olives. Okay, let's get this one started. Now, looking at these, I'm worried that they're gonna be a little bit dry, so I'm gonna add some chicken broth, which we also have left over, which is awesome. Uh, when I go to cook these up, I'm just going to fry them in the skillet. This would be a really good one to make if you are making meals for one or for your lunches. You could mix everything together in a bowl. You could even put them in those microwave-safe containers, and they would microwave up really well. Other than the minced onion, which is, you know, very small, everything in here is cooked already, so it would reheat really well in the microwave. I think it's about like a cup in each that I'm putting in of the chicken broth. Measurements don't have to be exact. That's one of the great things about freezer cooking is it's a little like splish of this, a splash of that, and it works out. I'm going to seal it first without getting the air out and then squish everything around. Then I'll get the air out and reseal it. And voila, our turkey rice Greek bowl. So this is that ground sausage that we had left over and we still have a massive pot of rice. We had a rice math problem doing our prep. <laughs> I'm gonna use some of this rice in the recipe. Now, what I'm left with, I'm actually gonna put in quart size bags because rice freezes just fine. And for super, super busy days, if you need to be able to just take out rice that's already cooked so that you don't even have to cook up your rice, it's perfect for that Mongolian beef that we made or the egg roll in a bowl. Any of those kind of things, the rice is gonna work really well with. So I'm just going to take whatever's left and put it in quart size bags and put those in the freezer. For this, I thought, okay, we've got some diced green pepper left. We've got that minced onion left. Of course, we've got our 
you know, garlic, salt, pepper, those kinds of things. But I try to make a rice skillet sausage -y thing. And I have one can of fire roasted tomatoes in my pantry. I'd like to make them both with that, but I only have one can. I have one can of the tomatoes with spicy red pepper. So I'm gonna do one of them with this and one of them with the fire roasted. They'll probably be equally good, but that's my plan. It's gonna be super simple, but it'll kind of be a complete meal and it'll be really nice to have. And this way, none of our ingredients went to waste. We were able to stretch them over another meal. And this is another one that would work really well because everything's pre-cooked. If you wanna mix it together in a bowl and portion it out into microwave safe containers or quart size freezer bags. So let's quickly get this done and then I'm gonna tell you the total that we're at and it's not like I know Christy thought I was gonna invent like so many recipes because I usually do but I think without her here I don't quite have the same amount of energy and also going into this we knew that this was gonna be a crazy crazy week and so I purposely planned that we were not gonna buy extras of our ground beef or our chicken which normally we buy extra like big, huge Costco packs of chicken thighs just so that I can invent some extra chicken recipes and then we always get some extra ground beef or veggie beef so that I can invent recipes with that at the end. But this time, knowing that it was gonna be a crazy week, I actually really kept myself in check and so we are ending up at just like the tiniest little bit over what I planned, which is kinda nice. And also, that means that I was right when Christy was saying that it was going to be so many more meals. Now I was closer than her. And uh, not that I'm super competitive or anything, but it always kind of feels good to be right, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, let's get this one underway. So I added some Italian seasoning along with the salt and pepper and then, you know, red pepper flakes never hurt any recipe. So I'm adding some of those in as well. This actually looks really good. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to use this sausage. Um, one of these containers is chorizo sausage and one of them is Tuscan sausage. These were raw sausage in my freezer. I got them in a plenty for 20 sale. Our local grocery store has these sales once in a while where you can get four packs of the meat. You never know what it's gonna be until you get there, but you can grab four packs for just $20. If that happens to be on a 15% off day, you even get more savings. So I was able to grab these and they've been in my freezer raw. This morning I took them out, thawed them quickly, and then cooked them up and sliced them so they are ready to go. Now it's safe to do that because they were raw before. Now we've cooked them and yes, we'll be refreezing them, but we're not refreezing them in the same state they were in. So it's totally safe to do. Now, my plan for this, kind of excited, is that we had planned to do this chicken and sun-dried tomato pasta sauce. This is a recipe from our Freezer Meals 101 Club. It's really good and we haven't made it in quite a long time. I was craving it. I bought all the ingredients for it and we prepped everything, but I had a little bit of an issue with chicken. When I was doing cooked cube chicken in my prep, the amount of chicken that I bought when I cooked it up, it did not equal the amount that I needed. Now, I think it was because there must have been some, you know, you hear maybe they inject water in chicken sometimes. So I had bought frozen chicken and then cooked it up and it just was half of what I needed, half. So it was 
really disappointing. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just use half the chicken and we'll just have less in each of the recipes. But yesterday when we went to assemble the Cajun one pot chicken pasta, we realized it was just like so measly, the amount of chicken that was in there. So we decided to take the chicken that was supposed to be used for the chicken and sun-dried tomato pasta sauce and just, you know, donate it to the one pot Cajun chicken pasta. I was a little bit sad about not getting to make this. And then this morning when I was thinking about it, I don't want to waste all the mushrooms that we sliced for this recipe. And I don't want to waste the other ingredients that I purchased. Uh, my brain was like, I've got those sausages in the freezer. So thawed them, cooked them, and we are gonna use this in place of the chicken in this chicken sun-dried tomato pasta sauce. I think it's going to taste possibly even better than the chicken would have. And I think it's gonna be fun to experiment because I'll just write on the bags which ones have the Tuscan, which one has the chorizo, and we'll get to experiment and see which one we like best, which is always fun too. So we're gonna get making this recipe and we'll see how it turns out. For our sun-dried tomato pasta sauce with sausage instead of chicken, we've got our sausage in the bags there and then we're gonna add some cooked and crumbled bacon. I mean, when I had that prepped, there was no way I could waste that. Then some thinly sliced onion, sliced mushrooms, sliced sun-dried tomatoes, lemon juice, Madras curry paste, white wine or chicken broth, some poppy seed salad dressing, and evaporated milk. We're gonna squish all that together to combine it, seal it after getting the air out, freeze it. When you go to make this, you're just going to simmer it in a skillet until it's heated through. And you can serve this on a long pasta noodle, like a linguine or fettuccine. You can add some Parmesan and red pepper flakes if you prefer it that way. And this is just hopefully going to be even more delicious than the intended chicken and sun-dried tomato pasta sauce. We will see. I'll show you a picture of the completed chicken one just so that you know kind of what it was intended to be and you can use your imagination and imagine it with the sausage and that's how this one is going to look before we do the big reveal I just want to remind you that we are starting to do those live cooking classes in the Freezer Meals 101 Club. So if you want to get in on that before the price goes up, then check out the link in the description below. That way you can get your freezer stacked like this so that you don't have to worry about what's for dinner and you can take one of your big stresses off your plate. I'm really happy with our grand total. We have 126 freezer meals. Even though it was a little bit of chaos this time, it still turned out so, so well. I'm gonna show you the freezer. And I also have some meals in our second freezer. This is what Christy calls my show freezer. <laughs> and she always laughs at the meals that aren't good enough to go in my show freezer and how they might feel sad. But it's just the ones that maybe don't fit as well, like, I'll show you the second freezer. So in here, we've got our things like the pork carnitas and the barbecue beef on a bun and our Mississippi pot roast, the things that don't fit as well. I also have my smoothie bags, my breakfast things, those protein bowls that I made for my husband. And I have a collection started for my son who's gonna be moving out soon. So I've got some like freezer meals for one and two in there as well. So that freezer is a little less show worthy, but it's still pretty beautiful because it means less cooking for me. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. I really hope that we've shown you how this is possible for you too. We would love to hear about your freezer meal successes and sharing that with you. Thanks again for being here and happy cooking.